Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rebecca Keppel. In today's video, I'm sharing a ton of different ways to use Waffle Flower's brand new stencils. I've got a bunch of card samples to share too, so let's jump right into the first technique, which is using different colors of Distress Oxide ink with layered stencils to create a really fun rainbow look. This is the Ring Builder stencils. The number one is on the left hand side and number two is on the right. You use them together and you rotate them to create complete rings. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Whenever I work with stencils, I use my Thermoweb Pixie Spray and Waffle Flower Water Medium Mat to hold the stencils in place. So I spray the back of stencil number one with Pixie Spray and then place my A2 card panel over the overspray on the water medium mat. Then I placed the stencil on top. I taped off part of the stencil to make sure I only blended picked raspberry on the upper left arcs. Then I blended cracked pistachio on the bottom right arcs. I needed to remove the tape because I had covered up some of the arcs that needed to be green. You don't really need to tape off the sections if you're using small foam blenders like this because it's pretty easy actually just to blend the arc that you want as they are far enough apart. Then I peeled off the stencil to see where we were in terms of creating our rainbow rings. Next, I placed stencil number two on top. You can see I'm lining up the tips of the openings with the corners of the already inked arcs. Again, the bottom right arcs are going to be green, so I covered all of them up with cracked pistachio. The top left arcs are picked raspberry, so basically stencil number two in its first position is flipped, where I needed to fill in green at the top of the card and pink at the bottom of the card. I peeled off stencil number two and went back to stencil number one and rotated it 90 degrees clockwise. This gives me openings for the upper right arcs, which will be squeezed lemonade, and the lower left arcs, which will be tumbled glass. Then I need to do the same thing for stencil number two. Rotate it 90 degrees clockwise to fill in the yellow arcs, this time at the bottom of the card, and the blue arcs, this time at the top of the card. I absolutely loved peeling the stencil back to reveal these gorgeous rainbow rings in my favorite colors. I missed a couple of rings, so I just replaced the stencils and added in the colors that were missing. At this point, since the majority of the rings were complete, it was easy to figure out what needed to be added in where, and it was easy to line up the stencil by using the completed rings as placement guides. I think there are probably a billion color combinations that would look great with these rings, but you know how much I love rainbows, so this combo made me very happy. I finished off the card with Waffle Flower's Happy Birthday Word Die. I had used iCraft thin, easy cut, double sided adhesive sheets behind the white cardstock when I die cut the happy birthday letters. And a tip for getting that I dot out is to lay the die over the word and push the dot out with a spellbinder's tool in one. I popped the sentiment and shadow up with foam adhesive and added some enamel dots for embellishments. For the next card, I'm using the Ink Spots stencil. Now you could definitely just ink over this stencil, but I used Tombow dual brush pens to give it an even more watercolor artistic look. This is the Ink Spots stencil, which has guides for four and a half and five and a half inch squares. I'm using the Waffle Flower palette paper to protect my mat from staining by the Tombow markers I'm going to use. I sprayed the back of the stencil with Pixie Spray over the palette paper and then lay down a six by six piece of Canson Bristol Smooth cardstock and placed the stencil on top of the cardstock. Next, I used Tombow markers to partially color in the open areas of the stencil, then used a small brush with a bit of water to spread the color to the rest of the stencil opening to give each ink spot a watercolor effect. 
Once again, I'm going for a rainbow color scheme here. Big shocker, I know. So I'm trying to create about two spots of each color to start with. I'm only doing one spot at a time because the color moves more freely when it is wet and it hasn't had the time to sink into the paper. I'm also being consistent about laying down the color from the Tombows on the left hand side of the open parts of the stencil and then using the water to move the color out towards the right. Not necessary, but it gives the look of a light source coming from the right hand side. For the full circles, I'm going to use purple to complete my rainbow and the little dots are a darker blue. I love the look this creates because I always struggle with paint swipes and paint droplets. This gives the look of that with all kinds of control over color and also placement. I'm temporarily adhering the largest deckled frame die over the stenciled background and running it through my die cut machine. It will end up just a touch smaller than A2, so I'm adhering it to a teal A2 piece of cardstock. I'm adding the happy birthday word die again with iCraft easy cut adhesive to a teal shadow layer to match the background and again popping it out that eye dot with my spellbinders tool in one. I popped up the word die cut and shadow on foam tape and then added some small enamel dots for embellishments. I felt like there was so much fun color already on this panel that I decided to add the clearly enough dots this time. I love these because they add shine and dimension perfect to any project since they are clear. Just like the ink spot stencil, the inky stripe stencil would look great just with plain old ink blending, but I decided to bump it up a notch by using Thermoweb products to make the inky stripes foiled. This is the inky stripe stencil. I sprayed pixie spray on the back and placed an A2 white cardstock panel on the overspray and then placed the stencil down on top. It's a good idea to press down on the stencil to allow the pixie spray to temporarily adhere to the cardstock so it stays sucked down while you're working on it. I'm using the Thermoweb Deco Foil Duo Gel, which means you can apply the foil with heat or pressure. I scoop out the gel with a Tonic Studio spatula and place it on the straight edge of Thermoweb's stencil pal. I wanna make sure there's enough to fill in all the open spaces of the stencil. I wanna apply the gel horizontally across the stencil because that is the direction of the open spaces and it makes it easier to get a smooth application. So I place the stencil pal at about a 45 degree angle and move from left to right Right across the stencil. It's tough to see in the camera because everything is white, but you want an even application. It doesn't have to be very thick to cover up all the openings, but the gel will dry dimensional too. So I'll carefully peel off the stencil and then lift up the cardstock with a palette knife. This panel needs to be set aside to dry until the gel is clear. How long that will take really depends on several factors, including how thick your application is and even your climate. Once it's dry, I pulled out a rainbow, yes, a rainbow <laughs> of colors of Thermoweb's Deco Foil transfer sheets. These are their latest fairy tale colors. I have the panel with the gel that is now clear, and I have a piece of parchment paper folded in half to create my foil sandwich. I place the panel inside the parchment and place strips of the foil on top of the dried gel. It's okay to layer the foil strips on top of each other. Just know that the color that is on the bottom is the one that will adhere to the gel. Once I had the whole panel covered with strips of foil, I put a piece of tape on the foil strips hanging out the side to keep them all together. And then I put the whole parchment paper sandwich inside my laminator, which had been heating up for a good 10 minutes. When you peel off the foil strips, you can see how the foil adhered to the gel to create a beautiful dimensional painted rainbow stripes background. There were a couple of spots I missed, probably by the foil's wrinkling, so I'm going to use the Thermoweb Deco Foil adhesive pen to add a bit of adhesive to those spots to fix them up. This adhesive only takes about a minute to dry, so once it was all dry, I added some new foil scraps over the areas I wanted to fix. I placed those back in the parchment sandwich and back in the laminator, and they were all covered up. I cut foiled background down to four by five and a half and adhered it to an A2 card cardstock panel, popped up the happy birthday sentiment and added a few colorful enamel dots for extra embellishment. 
The spotlight stencils are really great for ink blending within a certain shape. I have the spotlight square and it would be great for creating a little scene or just highlighting a certain area of the card. But it also works great with the Mary Bow stencil and I combine the two with some glitter glitz gel to create a really cute present. This is the spotlight square stencil. You get the stencil and the square mask. And this works really great with the Mary Bow stencil as well. So I start out by spraying the back of the spotlight square stencil with pixie spray. Then I lay an A2 cardstock white panel on the overspray and lay the stencil on top using the guidelines to center the square. Next, I'm going to ink blend with Distress Oxide Mowed Lawn and add in a little bit of pine needles as well to get a really pretty blend between the two colors. And I love how crisp this looks when you peel off the stencil. This time I'm going to spray the back of the Mary Bow stencil and I'm going to line it up right on top so that it looks like it's a bow sitting on top of a present. Then I grab some Gina K for Thermoweb Glitter Glitz Gel in silver. I am not a fan of loose glitter, but this gel looks like you used loose glitter without any of the crazy mess. Just scoop some of the gel out with a spatula and spread it over the stencil. The glitz does not have to be applied very thick, but the thicker you apply it, the more dimensional it will dry. It may take a little bit longer to dry, but the outcome is absolutely fantastic. I'm applying just one color, but you could use a different color of glitz for the sentiment or the bow if you choose. Once dry, I cut the panel down and I'm using scissors to cut some white fun foam, which I'm going to use to pop up this whole panel. I added tape runner to the back of the panel in the center and then placed the fun foam on top of that. Then I placed tape runner in the middle of the red and white dots pattern paper from the Waffle Flower Half Half Dots Christmas Pad and placed the popped up panel on top of that. Super simple and clean card, but I love the effect of the ink blended square and the glitz sentiment and bow. I also created a couple of cards with the scene builders. So I have Kiwi's Sky Scene Builder and also the Mountain Scene Builder for this card. Kiwi's Mountain Scene Stencil comes with a main piece that has clouds and pine trees and two areas to mask off for mountains. And I love that they give you the cut off pieces to use as masks as well. Similarly, Kiwi's Sky Scene includes stars in the stencil and two edges of clouds and the cut off pieces for additional cloud masks. I decided to work on a craft cardstock panel so that if anything didn't get covered on the ground, it would look like dirt or mountains. I'm using Hero Arts White Pigment Unicorn Ink for the first layer of snowy mountains. I did a light coverage for this first layer and then placed a different set of mountains for the second layer and used a more intense layer of the white ink. The little line of pine trees lines up perfectly on this second set of mountains. I'm pouncing the Pine Needles Distress Oxide ink on top of the open areas of the pine trees rather than blending because I wanted them to look snowy. They still ended up looking a little too green for my taste, so I cleaned off the stencil and replaced it over the trees and added a few dabs of the white ink to add some extra snow on top. This time, I'm using the mask cut off edge with the pixie spray to cover up the top mountains so I can ink blend the sky. I'm using Mermaid Lagoon, Blueprint Sketch, and Chipped Sapphire for a layered looking night sky. To complete the sky, I'm going to use the Sky Scene Builder Stencil and pounce white ink over those stars. I cut the Merry Christmas word die without the shadow and used iCraft Easy Cut Adhesive behind it to adhere it onto the sky. I'm stamping one of the banner subsentiments from the stamp set in Mermaid Lagoon and then fussy cutting it right out up to the edge of the stamp so there's no white border and layering with a thin strip of foam adhesive behind it over the Mermaid Lagoon part of the sky. I'm not usually confident in creating scenes like this, but these stencils make it super easy and a lot of fun. 
Last but not least, I used the pine tree stencil to create another holiday card. The pine trees stencil comes with a stencil of three pine trees, the masks for all three trees, and the edges can be used to create snowdrifts or hills. I'm going to combine the pine tree stencil with the square spotlight stencil. So I'm going to spray the back of the square spotlight with pixie spray and use the grid lines to line it up on an A2 white cardstock panel. Next, I sprayed the pine tree stencil with pixie spray and then placed one of the trees over the left hand side of the square stencil. I'm using some mowed lawn to ink up that tree. This is just so I know where I want the tree placed. So I peel off the pine tree stencil and spray the back of the matching mask of that pine tree that we used and place the mask right over the ink blended tree. Now that the tree is covered, I can ink blend the square spotlight. I'm using the same three blue colors I used in the last card, Mermaid Lagoon, Blueprint Sketch, and Chipped Sapphire. Once I finish ink blending the square, I can peel off the tree mask and the square stencil. Now I replace the pine tree stencil and this time I fully blend out the tree with mowed lawn and pine needles distress oxide inks. To color the tree stump, I cover up the bottom of the card so I don't get brown everywhere and then ink blend the stump. I want to add snow to the tree boughs, so I replace the stencil once again, and this time I add Brutus Monroe Cotton Puff. I peel off the stencil for the last time and add Cotton Puff to the base of the tree to create a pile of snow underneath. If you've seen my favorite white gel pen video, you know I love adding white gel pen dots to create snow and stars, so I'll do that here on the blue square. Once all of that is dry, I cut the panel down and adhered it to dark blue cardstock. And now I'll place the panel inside my mini Misty and use some chipped sapphire ink to stamp a sentiment from Waffle Flower's Big Dots Holiday Stamp Set. I added a few Tonic Studios Nouveau Drops in gold as ornaments on the tree and a few more larger white dots with the Pentel Milky Pop white gel pen for snow and stars and this card is practically a one layer card making it nice and light to go through the mail. I love these new stencils because they're a real affordable way to create your own unique customized backgrounds. Plus, I love that you can just use them over and over and over again. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos sharing new products and how to use them, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit the bell so you can be notified every time I have a new video available. As always, I want to thank you so much for spending time with me. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon.